Politicians are starting to lose their will to invest public funding. In fact, they don't even know where they're going to get the public funding. Give us two concrete arguments that we can say to our politicians or our policymakers about why they should continue to invest and even increase in, uh, public funding in arts and culture. Well, perhaps two is too many, but uh, the first one I would certainly give them is that uh, we in the cultural sector are going to get very nasty if they uh, break the problems of their crisis onto our backs because uh, uh, I happen to live in England at the moment and uh, uh, during the, th the Thatcher years when uh, uh, the cuts in culture were ever so deep there was an absolute blossoming of a very exciting, very radical pop uh, uh, political theatre which, um, which was absolutely merciless uh, in, in, in the criticism of, of, of the politicians so uh, I think that they have to remember that uh, uh, we'll, we'll, t we'll, we'll take them to book and, 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 and ask questions. We're dangerous, we can we are, hurt them. We can be very dangerous, uh, in the best possible way. Um, and uh, I'm not really a, a modernist. Well, maybe I am a modernist in my, in my heart, in terms of I really still believe, being an old dog, I still believe that there are issues worth fighting for, that there are certain important things. I, I still believe in progress and most of my postmodernist students don't really understand the position of progress. However, all of these old-fashioned words in times of crisis and in times of austerity become extremely important because only yesterday the, 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 the Tory party in Britain, uh, uh, Cameron, actually asked the nation to, 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 uh, to put themselves together and serve the country. Now that is very old-fashioned uh, language. And, uh, um, I think that uh, things go in circles and uh, the important battles will always remain important and they should be forceful. What is European shared space? They talk all the time, it's, a, it's, a, it's becoming a common word, the sh our shared space, our European shared space. With your experiences having lived in two different countries throughout your lifetime for long periods of time, uh, in what ways does arts and culture actually contribute to this idea of a shared space? Uh, the beauty of, of the arts and culture is that uh, wherever there are political borders, the political borders are usually very stringent and very unsurpassable and usually people go to war around these borders. The beauty of culture is it doesn't really care for political borders. It goes under the door. You can have a wall, you can have a door, it goes under, like water goes, and it permeates stuff. It changes, it's porous, it's like yogurt and milk. It, it changes things without without worrying and without um, uh, uh, simply overcoming political uh, hurdles and political... Uh, um, I mean, there was a wall and uh, ideas flew under it and through it and, and over it. So we are more. Arts is more than just politics. <laughs> I, exactly. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be talking at this, uh, at this uh, uh, conference tomorrow and uh, yes, uh, even if we don't prove easily and convincingly that we are more, we must see to it that we are not less, because we ain't. Thanks very much.